All right, guys. Hey, Paul McClain. Welcome to the Monday Morning Wake Up Podcast, Classroom Edition. I got my buddy Marcus. Marcus, what's up, brother? How's it going? Good to see you, man. Hey, this is like a table talk coaching session. So I was like, we got to bring out the tabletop to do this, right? And uh, I get the pleasure of working closely with Marcus here at the Yapa Valley office. And uh, he's been extremely valuable to the whole office and the agents that come in and plug in. He's had a lot of conversations with him about telesales and what he's doing and how he's doing it because he's out there serving 30 families a month over the phone. He's in the office usually like at 6 a.m. I think <laughs> call people in like Chicago or something, right? Yep. So yeah. he gets an early start and uh, he's already got sales underneath his belt as the day begins for most agents, which that there alone is a massive tip we could do a whole podcast on. But today, guys, we really want to serve the classroom here in the best possible way. And the best way to do that is active one-on-one -on -one coaching. I spoke about this a little while ago, how in order to become an expert, you want to have 10,000 hours of practice. That's like the, the rule, the law, and uh, you've had people kind of debate that and say, like, well, what about Tiger Woods? That dude was killing it at an early age, and then they go back to film, and the dude was golfing at three. So by the time he hit 10,000 hours, a lot of people were just touching a golf club for the first time. And they break down and they take a look at even Bill Gates. Like, well, how did he, at that age, and, and if you look at the interview, he had one of the only hospitals in the entire country that had these data computers, and he would go in late at night for hours and hours and hours and mess around on those computers. And by the time he was at this age, he'd already had that 10,000 hours of practice. So it's like, a, it's like a universal law, right? Now, what they say, though, is if you can get some one-on-one -on -one coaching, the neurons that fire in your brain that build that white substance called myelin that helps you elevate to expert that much faster, it just expedites, right? And they give these examples of people playing violins and all this stuff where a coach gets to, hey, don't say this, say this, tweak this, tweak that, that that's the most, your brain is in such a high state of firing where you really retain it and you're able to go out there and put into practice that which you've been coached on. And so we wanted to bring that to you guys today. And the one thing I'll say as we get, uh, I pass it to Marcus and he's gonna kick it off with the first session, going through a one-on-one -on -one coaching with telesales. I'll wrap it up going through a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with somebody booking appointments to go sit with the client. I just wanna encourage you, like that 10,000 hours of practice, when I read that, I was like, thank you, God. Because Marcus, I was so terrible, dude. And I know people, I'm telling, I was so bad that I thought like, if I could just stick out this whole 10,000 hour thing, I'll be an expert on the phones, in the home, at recruiting, at getting agents started, like that's applicable. And so I sat back and really for the first time I thought like, man, if that's the case, then what everybody should be doing in whatever industry or career path that, you, that you're in is asking yourself, what does expert level look like? What does the lifestyle look like? What does the schedule look like? What does the income look like? Because me, I was pumping septic tanks, right? Marcus was cutting trees, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> so if you're really good at cutting a tree, you might get that tree down that much faster and know how to cut it down. But dude, like you're not gonna get paid 5,000 times more by getting it done. Same thing with me. I might be able to identify like, oh, that house, the way it's shaped, the septic tanks on the left, not the right. Like maybe I get a couple more jobs in a week, but I ain't gonna make that much more. But in this deal, as bad as you could be, if you stick with it and you get that 10,000 hours of practice, and I remember when I hit that tipping point in the field, because I was sitting with, you know, 20 families every week, week in, week out, week in, week out, and a couple years in, I'd already put in really that 10,000 hours of practice, and I remember just being so fluid. Like I would just, no matter if I was sitting with an old client, young client, single family, this objection, think about objection, budget objection. It was almost like subconscious. I could just boom. It was like I didn't. It was like I didn't even think about it. Like the neurons just fired. It was almost autopilot. Well, why? Because I had finally hit that expert level after so many, so many hours. And so it's either ten years or ten thousand hours. So when we say, hey, you can expedite this process by sitting with more families, that's the the neuroscience behind it. Not to make it seem like I'm a neuroscientist, because as you guys know, that's clearly not the case. But that's a fact, that's how it works. So with that said, I really do believe this is gonna serve everybody. It's gonna serve whoever's sitting in the seat that much more, but I believe it's gonna serve all of you guys because I think you'll be able to lean in and identify like, man, I get why she said it like that and I get why his feedback, and that makes sense why he said what he said. Because it's one thing to say something, it's a difference on how you say it. And how you say it, most of the time, 
is derived from why you think you should be saying it. It's like if my wife says, hey, how does my butt look in these jeans? I'm, I could say, hey, it looks good, girl. Like, <laughs> it looks good. That's what she's looking for. And, and that's, that's, I get a better response. It's, right. I got a deposit. It's, you know, it's, I'm going in the right direction. Or if I'm like, it looks good. I get, she's like, it looks good. And now it's, now the fight broke out. They yeah. from, now I said the same thing. It's how I was saying it. And see, a lot of times that's what we'd miss is it's like, oh, I said the words, I said the script. Yeah, you said it, but you said it with, with the complete wrong tonality and pitch and speed. Like, like they didn't hear what you were trying to, what you needed to convey. And that's important as well. And so I believe you'll be able to get also the psychology behind the phones as well and so if you guys can lean in this is going to serve you and serve you well marcus i appreciate you bro i'm gonna get out of the way you can ask whoever you want to have come up or whoever wants to volunteer themselves to uh sit here in the hot seat and get some help so appreciate you bro okay right on appreciate you paul um just a, a takeaway from that like paul hit it right on the head that ten thousand hours to be realistic it's a skill you have to build like like i was saying earlier you have to get past the activity so you have to have the right amount of activity um, and you have to have the right attitude coming into telesales but um, i would like to bring somebody on can i get a volunteer elizabeth <laughs> okay so elizabeth how you doing good how are you good good so we're gonna do a little bit of role playing and i want to give as much value as i possibly can to you guys um, I know I might seem like the expert and telesales right now, but I'm just a student. I'm just a student of the game. I just literally copied off of everyone else um, and I kind of made it into my own thing. And then I build a skill as I was putting in the activity, those hours, right? Um, so we'll do a little role play. Um, shall I be, you want me to be the client or you want me to be the agent? The agent. Okay, I'll be the agent first and then you wanna switch it up or, okay. All right, ring, ring. Hello. Hello, Elizabeth. Hi. Hi, Elizabeth, my name is Marcus McCall. I'm the state field underwriter in the state of Illinois. Just getting back to you in regards to that request you recently filled out, looking for more information on the life insurance programs. You remember doing that? I do not. Okay, so you put down your date of birth at 12-5 of 34, does that sound about right? Yes. Okay, and it was some time ago, but I see you're marked in the system as unresolved, meaning you never got the information. Again, my name is Marcus McCall. I'm assigned to get you the information that you requested on the life insurance. Um, and real quick, before I go ahead and verify your information, um, what, what's pretty much got you looking into life insurance or what would you like it to accomplish? You trying to take care of you know, funeral, final expenses, leave someone money, maybe a combination of both? A combination of both. Okay, perfect. That's pretty much 80% of the people that I talk to. Um, now, Elizabeth, again, my name is Marcus McCall. I'm a state field underwriter, um, and I'm a benefit coordinator, and all that means is I have the ability to do the shopping around amongst all the insurance carriers in the industry. And we work with over 40 different primary A-rated carriers. We don't work with any secondary carriers, so we, we promise to put your, you know, your family in the best possible position, okay? So we're gonna find you the best rates with the best benefits. Um, and I'm not sure, uh, have you applied for life insurance before at all? No. Okay, so uh, life insurance, now I will say that you can't purchase it, you actually have to medically qualify for it. Um, and as a medical field underwriter, I'm here to get you medically qualified. So what I'll do is the process, what it looks like is I'll ask you a few medical questions, a little bit about your financial, based on how you answer those questions, that's how we determine you know, what you qualify for. Um, and then everything's based off of your MIB. So anytime you go to the doctor's office and they're typing in that little computer database, that's called the Medical Information Bureau. Based off what that says, that's how they determine if they're gonna grant you the coverage or not. And it has all your, you know, all your medical history, your, your prescriptions, your, your diagnosis, um, all, your all your medical history, um, and then that's how we'll determine you know, where to pivot amongst all the insurance carriers out there in the marketplace, okay? Okay. Um, so we'll go ahead and jump into those health questions. But before we continue, Elizabeth, I would like to let you know that all personal and health related information that's collected, it's going to be completely confidential and protected under federal HIPAA laws. And then are you, do you still have the Elizabeth uh, 1993 at gmail.com? Yes. Okay, so I will send you over my credentials. It'll be my state license and there'll be an attachment. Um, that'll be my state license and a link 
um, for the information on how to look me up on the National Producer Registry. That way you can verify who I am. I am a licensed medical field underwriter, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. We validated the information. Um, so I'll jump into the medical question. So date of birth of 12-5 of 34. Um, now in the past two years, Elizabeth, have you had any tobacco or nicotine products? No. Okay, perfect. What's your height and weight? 5'2", uh, 130. 5'2", 130. Okay, in the past five years, any heart attacks, heart surgeries, or strokes? No. Perfect. Any respiratory issues for you, like COPD, bronchitis, emphysema, any asthma, anything like that? Asthma. A little bit of asthma. Okay. Is that all butyrol? Uh, no, unprescribed. Unprescribed. Okay, gotcha. So we'll mark that there. Um, and then as far as uh, diabetes or any high blood pressure, any, any complications with that? No, nothing like that. Okay, perfect. Um, any cancers at all? Not that I'm aware of. Perfect. Have you been hospitalized in the past two years? Yes. Okay, what was that for? Miscarriage. Miscarriage. Okay, about, about how long ago? About six months ago. Six months ago. You prescribed any, um, any like opioids for it? Any painkillers? No. Okay, perfect. Uh, any kidney or liver issues? No. Okay. Any other prescription medications you're taking right now? No. Okay. Anything I might not have mentioned um, that you're currently dealing with as far as medical goes? Uh, not that I can think of. Okay, perfect. You're going to make my job really easy. So um, that's good. So, and then real quick, you still working full time, part time, retired, or disabled? Full time. Full time? Okay, gotcha. All right, so Elizabeth, uh, what I'll do here is I'll enter all this information into the system. It's a, my quoting tool. And what it's going to do is it's going to populate anywhere from about 15 to 20 different companies, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little less, depending on how you answer the questions. Yeah, you're in pretty good health, so you should have a little bit more options. But um, what that looks like is once I plug it in, um, like I said, you know, a combination of companies are going to pop up. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and apply for the ones um, with the best benefits that are rating you the best, okay? Because we're going to put you in the best possible position. Give me about two minutes, and then I'll look that up. And then right there, so when I put them on hold, I'll put them on hold, I'll get confirmation, that's okay. I'll actually pull up the application, because I pretty much already know what to write. Um, so I'll start filling out the application right there. So I'm already in the application, and I unmute. Okay, Elizabeth, you there? Yes. Okay, perfect. So they were thinking the exact same thing I was thinking. Have you heard of the company uh, Prosperity? Yes. Okay, perfect. So um, you should know that they, they've been around for over 100 years. They are a primary A-rated carrier. Great track record for paying out their death benefits. And then super competitive across the marketplace as far as these programs go. So we'll try and get you qualified for them. And if some reason they want to rate you poorly or decline you altogether, we'll just pivot to the next best company. But we're going to go for the best companies first. Does that sound fair? Okay, so, and then that 20,000, and let's assume that, you know, I talked to her about 20,000 in coverage. It's popping up at $87.37. Now, is that something, you know, you think you can swing or is that a bit of a stretch? That's something I can do. Okay, perfect. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fill out the request for coverage, and that's just code for application. Um, and we will need, in order to do this, we will need three pieces of sensitive information. Okay, I'm gonna need a driver's license if you have that, if not a state ID. I'm gonna need your social security number because we're gonna do a medical background check. Remember I was telling you about the uh, MIB. And then we're gonna need an active form of payment on file, so an account and routing number. And what the insurance companies are doing there is they're validating that all your information matches. Um, they're ma making sure that your driver's license matches your social security, matches your banking information because they don't want anyone getting insurance in your name. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, do you have all three pieces of those information? Yes. Okay, perfect. Let's jump into the application. And then I pretty much from there, I just I go into the application and I kind of got my own little thing that I do throughout that, but it's pretty much how I, you know, structure that. Um, what I used to do is, is I used to go all the way to the end of the application for them to tell me that they didn't want to give me their sensitive information. So you save a lot of time by doing that up front. Hey, I'm going to need three pieces of sensitive information. I got this from Brandon Kitchens um, up front. 
that way you're not wasting a lot of time on the back end. You're going through the whole application. You spend an extra 20 minutes doing that. And then they tell you they don't want to give you that information. It's like, you know, so it's more efficient to ask up front, be the professional, let them know how the process is going to work. Um, and they, you know, you should make them feel comfortable as possible. But um, so you want to switch? Should we switch it? OK. All right. So I'll be the client. What was your name again? Marcus. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Marcus. Oh. Ring, ring. Hello. Hi, is this Marcus? This is. Who's this? Hi, my name is Elizabeth. I'm a local uh, underwriter in your area. I was calling about a form you filled out in the mail for mortgage protection. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Um, so what that is, is it's something that covers you uh, in the event that you pass away, become disabled, maybe diagnosed with a major illness, somewhere around there can pay off, you know, also has living benefits. It takes care of you um, and your legacy. Do you know what I'm talking about? Okay, yeah, is, um, is, is this part of like my home insurance? Is, is it the same thing? No, this is more of like a life insurance. Okay, gotcha. So this is really important to me because when I was younger, my mom passed away and we lost everything. And it's my mission to make sure that everybody gets life insurance because a couple years later, we were informed that she had life insurance and why the time I was 18, I was able to benefit from it. And so I want to make sure that if something happens to you, your family doesn't have to change their way of life. Okay, that makes sense. I appreciate that. Yeah. So what this is going to look like is they're going to have me ask you some personal information, such as, you know, your driver's license, your social security, your bank account. That just is making sure that you are who you say you are, your medical history is what it is, because that's what they go off of is age and medical history. Are you with me so far? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. So this process takes anywhere from five to 30 minutes, depending on... Uh, how long it takes us if we get it submitted and underwriting if you get approved all of those things. Do you have that time? Um, how long is this gonna take? Anywhere from five to thirty minutes depending okay. on how honest and open you are. With yeah, you. I think I think I should should have time I got an appointment here in about an hour. And I gotta start getting ready for that. But yeah, we can do it Perfect. I'll get you off the phone in no time. Can you offer me your uh, can you confirm your date of birth and your social security with me? Uh, 12 9 90 social security 381 Four five two one two three four. Perfect. Okay, and then I go into the medical questions and kind of go from there. And okay. Then, so I notice. Um, are you guys taking? She basically simplified everything that I just did. Yeah. She she literally accomplished what I did in about two minutes, as opposed to like ten to fifteen, which is awesome. That's great. Um, you know, she represented herself as the professional. And she told, she, she let me know it, what the process looked like, how long it was going to take, what information that she needed. Um, that was really good. Definitely. I can definitely take notes from that. So I appreciate that. Um, so I think we are now going to transition into booking appointments. So um, we'll have a couple more people come up. Hey guys, welcome back. So this is the second part of the classroom edition. I hope the first part really served you and served you well as you got to see Marcus unpack his telesales process and also here Elizabeth who, you know, just kind of shortened it up a little bit, but also has been getting some good results. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into booking an appointment where it's not one call close. You're booking the appointment to go see the client face to face. And so what I want to do is, is kind of do my best to, to help Jeremiah highlight and maybe spotlight some things that he's doing really well in the phone script and then also kind of maybe highlight and spotlight some of the things that if tweaked or adjusted might make a difference in helping him book more appointments and also not just book appointments within this we also have a goal to have the appointment show up right like i've, I've had that where it's like man i got nine appointments tomorrow it's gonna be a big day baby and then you go and nobody shows up you're like how'd it go well, i had nine no shows that's how it went you know <laughs> So, so we want to also be able to get that down well also where they, you book it and it's a quality, qualified appointment that they're going to show up to. So we really want to unpack that and go through it. Um, and now Jeremiah, just as a disclosure, is, he's not brand new. You've been doing this for a couple months, right? Yeah, probably like March was my first full month, so probably like three months. Three months. Yeah. He, he serves 15, 16 families on, on a month. We got to get that yeah. to like 30, right? Which yeah. hopefully this will do some kind of help in that. Right. And, and by the way, let me just put this disclaimer in and we'll jump right into it. Sometimes the biggest distraction an agent has is a falsified belief that if they got better on the phones, 
their business and income would all of a sudden skyrocket. And it's not the case. The case is for the most time, most of the time is the biggest thing you could change to increase your income and business is simply dial more. Buy more leads, book more appointments. So if we're looking at like the, the, the possible reasons of not hitting somebody's goal, the first is leads, mm -hmm. right? The second is activity. The third is kind of like the mindset behind it, which we could, we could put this into that, right? The mindset of like actually knowing why to say what you're saying, tweaking this, adjusting this, not saying this, saying this, thinking you're saying this, all that, that stuff. Yeah, does it help? It does, but it doesn't help nearly as much as getting more leads, booking more appointments. So if you're on here you're like, man, this is what I, this is why I'm only helping two families a month. Like, is this, it's not, if you're helping two families a month, buy more leads, make more phone calls, right? It's like trying to fix a sprained ankle. What? If you got a sprained ankle, fix it, but not the person that's got two broken kneecaps, fix those first. <laughs> They're broken. You can't even walk. Right? So, so we want to, I just want to clarify that this will help, but don't think that this is why you're not seeing the results. Most of the time, it's a lack of lead investment and a lack of activity, 90% of the time. And then this is gonna help you go from helping maybe, you know, 30 to 40% to 60, 70%, that little, that, that little bit extra, right? Where the profitability goes up, where now you're booking three, four more appointments a week. It's that kind of stuff. And so with that being said, bro, you go ahead and ring, ring. Okay. I'll pick up and we'll, uh, we'll get into it, dude. Okay, ring, ring. Hello, this is Paul. Hey, Paul. Yep. Oh, hey, Paul, this is Jeremiah Ortiz. I'm the local underwriter here in San Bernardino County. I'm um, just getting back to you really quickly in regards to this form you had filled out online requesting the information on the life insurance. Is that right? Yes. Perfect, man. So uh, I'm just a field underwriter that's been assigned to get this information over to you. Right here, it says that you put your date of birth was January 10th, 1985. Is that right? Yes. Perfect. And you're still off the main street in Hesperia? That's correct. Perfect. So I'm gonna make this really quick for you, Paul. My job is super simple. They send me out there for 10 to 15 minutes to go over the plans and options with you, just to show you what you can qualify for and to see what plan will best fit you. Um, they had me go out there to make sure you're not strapped down to a hospital bed or weigh like a thousand pounds. That's not you, right? No, uh, no okay. not, not right I, now. You sound pretty healthy. I didn't think so. So I'm going to make this quick for you, Paul. They're going to have me out in your area over the next two days. Are you currently still working, retired, disabled? Uh, working. You're working right yep. now? Okay, got it. Right, is that like a nine to five kind of job? Yeah, for the most part. Okay, got it. Was there a spouse or was it just you? No, I'm married. You're married? Okay, perfect. So are you and the wife usually in the door, usually around six o'clock? Uh, typically about 6.37, 6.37, okay, got it, because they're going to have me on your area Friday and Saturday. I already have a 6.30 and a 7, but what I can do, because they're going to have me running up and down the hill the next two days, I can squeeze you in between appointments at around 7.15, 7.30 on Friday evening. Any reason you and the wife won't be home? Yeah, Friday's not good, man. We've got soccer practice that night, okay. so okay. we'll hey, be I, back I until I hear then. you. The good news is they're going to have me out there Friday and Saturday, so Saturday we can just move you over. I already have a 7.15, so I'll just put you down at 7 30 just so we can squeeze you in so we can get this information out to you uh 7 30 saturday or any reason you guys will be home then? no no saturday work perfect man so go ahead and do me a favor can you grab a pen and a paper for me real quick paul yep okay got it so go ahead and take down my name it's gonna be jeremiah it's gonna be spelled j-e-r-e-m-i-a-h and then that's gonna be for saturday at 7 30 it's gonna be the 11th Okay, and then real quick, the state just requires me to leave you with my license number. Mm -hmm. You can verify this with me at the door. It's going to be 416-7141. And before I get you off the phone, Paul, can you just go ahead and verify all that information so I know we're on the same page? Yeah, license 0F42349. Correct, correct. Yeah, okay, got Jeremiah. It, Correct. Spelt with the first letter J. <laughs> Got it. Yes, that, that's correct. So, and then before I have you off the phone, Paul, um, before I get you off, do you have any current se serious underlying health conditions? Any kind of cancers, diabetes, strokes, no. anything like that? Completely Nothing. healthy? Yeah. Okay, got it. And you were mainly looking for burial, cremation? I just make sure when I die, family's taken care of. Okay, you're just making to leave a legacy? Okay, perfect. Okay. So I got you down tomorrow at a, or on Saturday at what time again? Uh, 7.30. 7.30, perfect. And the house, um, was, it a, was it an apartment? Was it a house? Is it's a any, house. Okay, is there any gated community at all? No, no. no? Okay, no. got it. Is, is there any big gate or big no. dog that might try to kill me when I get there? No. Nope. No? Okay, got it. All right, I got you down at 7.30 on Saturday. I look forward to meeting you and helping you out. All right, cool. All right, so very good, dude. The posture, like the, the did you see the psychology behind it? Like he felt, like I felt like he was in control. Um, it wasn't like he was trying to get an appointment for him. He was like accommodating me and doing me a favor because I asked for help. And that, that's the ticket, right? And I could feel that. And you could probably sense that and feel that too. 
as he's communicating. And the opposite of that is when an agent is calling a, a client and they're like, if you wouldn't mind, it only take this much time, you know, if do you remember that? And they start saying things like that, you almost feel like almost awkward for them. Like, <laughs> that just doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem right because they ask for help and send back a form. So it should be uh, this feeling of assumptiveness, assertiveness, um, directness. Also, like, I'm coming out of my way to help you. So you should have an attitude of gratitude towards me. That's kind of the whole posture that you want to have within that. Now, the one thing I would say to adjust is like when you say, were you filling this out for more burial or cremation? Um, the, the one thing you could do because the answer with that is, is n either yes or no, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. for the most part, a lot of families get life insurance for income replacement. So when you're saying, was it for burial, for cremation? Um, for the most part, the answer based off statistics, more times than not, it's gonna be a no. And, and every question to keep it as organized and, and structured and also to keep you following me down the path that I'm trying to lead you right that's the whole process of sales is for you to be led by my thought process and be able to and, and I'm guiding you to the answers and we end up at the end where you're you you I've got the appointment that's the sell so if you're dialing to book the appointment face to face the sell is the appointment right. it's not anything other than, than that right and them showing up so I, I would say something like, so, you know, and Jeremiah, real quick, I know most families that send this request back in, it's typically for the same reason. They want to make sure that when they die, there's not a financial hardship or burden for their family. Is that fair to assume that's kind of what you had in mind as well? Yeah. So, th so then I've got a yes, because it's very mm. general, right? Okay. okay. So the answer is going to be yes. Now, when I'm face to face, I can go into more depth with that. Well, let me kind of unpack that. You know, why is that something that's important to you? What does your income look like? What is this? But on the phone, I'm just trying to get that general yes. Right. So that way I can, I can spotlight the fact that this is for you, not for me. This is something to, that's important to you. And I'm getting another yes. And the more yeses you stack, the easier it is to get the absolute yes you need, which is the appointment. Does that make sense? So I do like how you do that kind of at the end, right? Um, the other thing that you could, you could add and this will help with show ratio. Like, what's your show ratio? Dude, it's, it's been, I've been struggling lately. It's been okay. a lot of no shows. So, so your, your appointment, the, it, it's very fluid. It, it sounds like you've got it, everything just dialed in. It's, it's, it's very good, right? And I'm, I'm more over analytical when it comes to this um, because I want to help. Like, right. I, I don't want to act like it's good and if it's not. Mm -hmm. But it, it's good. And I already knew it was going to be good because... You, you book more appointments than most people on dial days. B but the one thing that I can tell you that, that will increase your show ratio is, is this. When, it's, when there's a good why, there's urgency, and there's no risk, people show up. So if your show ratio is not very good, it's either because they don't think it's that important, they don't think it's that urgent, or they think there's a risk involved. Okay, so let me unpack that. The importance is like why they sent the form back in. So if you have them not showing up, maybe you need to ask them like, hey, by the way, Jeremiah, most families that send this back in, and you ask that question, because a lot of producers that have a bad show ratio, they're not asking that. They're not saying, hey, by the way, Jeremiah, real quick, I know most families that send this request back in, it's usually for the same reason. They want to make sure that when they die, there's not a financial struggle or hardship left for their family and loved ones. It's fair to assume that's kind of what you had in mind as well. Just that simple yes does make a difference, mm -hmm. okay? The second thing, the risk is this. You come to my house, I can't afford it, and now I've gotta be in this uncomfortable environment and situation where you're trying to sell me something that I can't afford. Or the other risk is I get something that nobody else gets and I shouldn't have got mm -hmm. and I got took. That's the other risk in somebody's mind when it comes to having somebody come to their house. Right. So, so the different things you can do in your script to kind of negate that is, is when I say, so, so Jeremiah, um, listen, they have me coming out, to your, out in that area. I'll be dispatched out there. I've, I've got about 13, 14, 15 appointments that'll be scheduled that day. Um, the, way, the way it works, it's pretty simple. I'm going to get the information dropped off um, to you. What you do with it up to you makes no difference to me. So that's one thing you can add to the time when you say, you gotta make sure you're not a thousand pounds, mm -hmm. this and that, and get the information to you. Jeremiah, what you do with it, it's, it's up to you, it makes no difference to me, I just feel done right. 
but it'll take about five, 10 minutes to get that information to you. Now that way I can put down some notes because we are running really behind and I'm kind of just helping out in the area. What time are you typically in the door? So if you just add that right before you transition into, you know, kind of getting their schedule, it's, it's like a little pressure release, right? It makes no difference to me. I just feel done, right? I just got to get the information to you. What you do with it's up to you. Hmm. Now, I'm going to do my best to accommodate because I know it's important for you, but we are running behind and I'm just simply helping out. So I'm going to do my best to, to try to get this taken care of. What time do you typically get in the door? Okay. Cool. So then I like to ask, like, what time are you getting in the door? And once I've got that, then you can go into the appointment. But, but that's how you release the risk is by just saying stuff like that. It makes no difference to me. I just feel done right. What you do with the information, it's up to you. I just got to get it out there for you. Okay. So that, that'll help release the risk. That allows them more likely when they get hit with that thought between you booking it and the an appointment taking place, when they say, I don't know, you know what, just forget it. Or you know what, we're going to cancel. Or no, you know what, we're just not going to answer the door. A lot of times that's derived from those two thoughts. I don't want to be in that position where I can't afford it and I know I need it. Or I get something I shouldn't have got and I got took because nobody else got this, right? Mm. The last thing is the urgency part of it. So the urgency is, is when you say little things like, and, and Jeremiah, we're running really behind in schedule. So as a manager, I'm, the field underwriting manager, I'm kind of just helping out in the area and I'm gonna do my best to accommodate you. So just that little statement. Sometimes we think that like something dramatic has to change about our scripting mm -hmm. to get a different result for, for show ratio and it's not. It's little things that gets them to see you as the way they need to see you in order to actually show up to the appointment. And when you say like, you know, hey, Jeremiah, I know we're really behind and as a field underwriting manager, I'm gonna put down some notes to best accommodate you. That there alone makes a difference because people will show up more likely when somebody, when there's no risk, it's important, and the person showing up seems like they hold some kind of good position. Is it you, you with me? So I'm the field underwriting manager just kind of helping out in the area, right? And when I can say I'm going to do my best to accommodate you, that increases urgency because now they're thinking like, well, maybe I can't get this. Or if he says something like, well, this week's really bad. Can you call back next week? What does that tell me that he's, he's lacking? Urgency. urgency. So how do I increase the urgency? Make him realize that it's that important and I'm that busy. It's that important to him because he could die tomorrow. He desperately needs this and I'm the answer to that. There's nobody better that could sit with him and I'm not just as available as he thinks I am. Mm -hmm. That's how you get that increased as well. So if, I, if he says like this week's not that good, like I'll get, let me, let me hit you with, the, is that an objection you get sometimes? Like, hey, yeah. Jeremiah, this week's not good. Yeah. All right, let me hear how you, so Jeremiah, listen, man, this week, um, it's just not gonna work, man. You're gonna have to give us a call back maybe next week or two. In fact, like two weeks is probably better. Summer's kind of crazy. I got five kids and stuff's just going on. But um, yeah, man, if you call me back a couple weeks, we can definitely touch base. Okay, no problem, Paul. Um, good news is that, we actually just manage this county every now and then. They only have me in this area for so little time. Uh, the good news is we can squeeze you in between appointments to accommodate you best better because like, apparently you can see it's like you're pretty busy. So what I can do for you as a courtesy to you is I can just squeeze you in between appointments. Like I said, only takes 10 to 15 minutes. We can just get this information over to you just so we know that you have everything you receive so we can stop all the phone calls. So yeah. I can put you down. All right, so so this is, so w with that, it almost <coughs> kind of sounds like you're trying to get the appointment. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the squeezing in between appointments is great because that makes them realize that everybody's getting it. There's, there's, you're, you're very busy and it's not a real appointment, you're just kind of squeezing in between appointments. So that, that phrase does work great. Okay. That's all great, but when you say, it only, it's only gonna take 10, 15 minutes, I could just try to get you in, I could try to get you in. Mm -hmm. What you wanna do is, is first play along with them. Okay. Like, so, like, Jeremiah, I understand completely having a, a crazy schedule. Listen, man, I, I get it. In fact, they've got me managing three or four counties right now, and so I don't even know the last time I've seen my, my spouse or girlfriend or whatever. But, but what I'll do is this, and how important this is for you, so I'm gonna actually put down some notes to see if there's anything we can do to accommodate you, because I know it's important. 
as far as your schedule, what time are you typically back in the door around this, this time of the season? Around six o'clock. Six o'clock? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, what about your, let's just say you're married, your spouse, what time are they typically in? They're usually, they're usually home all day, so. All day, so it's yeah. usually after six o'clock. Yeah. Is there anything else that's typically going on as far as like after school activities with the kids or anything like that? No, not typically, just be hanging out. Okay, got it. So Jeremy, listen, this is what I'm gonna do for you because right now I'm helping out in this county. I do know how important this is for you and I know the next time I'll be dispatched out there. So as a courtesy for you, what I'm gonna try to do is move a seven o'clock appointment, which I don't have available. That's booked only two weeks that we're dispatched out there. I'm gonna try to move that to an earlier time, put you in at seven o'clock. But in order for me to do that, I'm only gonna have probably five minutes and I'm gonna have to, to reach out and verify that I can do that. If I can't, I'll let you know if I can't make that work for you. But if I can, I'll just ask for a window between seven and eight because we are that behind. Is that fair enough? Yeah, that sounds fair. So, so it's very much a symptom. Does that make sense? Yeah. So once I've got you um, understand that, that I'm busier than you are. Right. Now I didn't say, well, Jeremiah, dude, <laughs> I'm way busier than you, bro. I didn't say that because it doesn't work. But I can indirectly say that by saying, Jeremiah, listen, I understand being busy, man, 100%, trust me. They got me in managing like three, four different counties. And also what I'm doing is portraying how busy I am by talking about how many clients need this protection, want this protection, or are going to get this protection, which people want to do what people do. They want to be a part of the herd. So I'm creating a herd in the way I'm actually teeing myself up to show how busy I actually am in the first place. So when I do that, and then I can just play along. But listen, I know how important this is for you. See, that's what a lot of times you guys gotta do. See, some of you guys are saying all this stuff, but you're missing that little statement. Hey man, listen, I know how important this is to you. I know how important this is to you. Why, why, why is that important? Because it's saying, it's not about me, bro. There's nothing, I, I'm gonna try to accommodate you because I know how important this is to you. Because if you don't say that, I might, be, I, I might say, I'm, I'm gonna do my best to accommodate you because I'm trying to make a sale. Now you say, I didn't say that. Mm. Well, it ain't what you said, it's what they heard. And you didn't say nothing. All you said is, I'm gonna try to accommodate you, right? But if you don't say, because I know how important this is to you and your family, I'm gonna do my best to accommodate you. Now I'm gonna put down some notes here, and then you wanna get more detail on the notes because the more information you've got, the more chips he's got on the table, as far as when I say, what time are you in the door? Do you have any extracurricular activities? And that, is that pretty much how it looks in this season? I mean, like right now? I've got all the chips on the table, so now I want to come back and say, listen, man, I actually don't have the seven. All the chips are on the table. I'm pulling back right now, and he's like, got all the chips on the table. I don't even know if we can do anything. I'm completely booked, but I'll tell you what, as a courtesy, because I know how important this is to you, I'm going to go ahead and, and move my, sorry to move my seven o'clock to an earlier spot. I can't promise that because I got to reach out to them, but I'm going to do my best to make that work. If I can't, then I'll call and let you know but because of that, I'm gonna need a window to try to squeeze you in, and that window will probably be between seven and eight. Is that fair enough? Now, what am I not asking? I'm not asking, is it fair enough to have the appointment? I'm not asking, are you now okay with me coming out this week, opposed to calling you back two weeks from now? I'm not asking that. I'm asking, is it okay if I've got a window because I'm going out of my way to make this work for you? Because now, as I've gone through everything, I've related to them, built it back up, now as I go back to book the appointment, I've got the urgency there, I've got the importance there, and I've got the no risk there. Mm -hmm. The no risk is like, and you know, you can do what you want with the information. Does that make sense? Right. So, so that's kind of how you increase the show ratio. The last thing is this, at the very end, do, do your ending again. So once I book and I say, all right, I got to seven o'clock. Well, go go through like the way you wrap up the call. Like the the way I said, like have you write everything down? Or yeah, I've already written it all down. I said your name's Jeremiah with the J. Okay. So okay, per Wait. perfect, Paul. I got you on Saturday at seven p.m. I look forward to meeting you and helping you out. Okay, perfect. So that's good. That that that'll help with your your show ratio. And the reason being is because when you say I'm looking forward to meeting you and helping you you're leaving the conversation with them understanding that you're doing them a favor. And the rule of reciprocation says that like, man, if you're coming out and doing something for me, I, I need to make sure to be there because you're doing this for me. So that, that little thing there made a difference for me when I, when I started to have a higher show ratio was that little bit difference like, and Jeremy, I look forward to meeting you and helping you tomorrow at seven o'clock. I'd pause and I'd allow him to say thank you. Mm -hmm. Because when somebody's grateful and appreciative, they show up. Does that make sense? 
If I give you tickets for a concert, like, yeah, thank you so much, and you're really grateful. You're gonna go to it, bro, you know what I mean? So, so that, that's the, the end of it. Now, the other thing is, <clears throat> when you book the appointment, do you ask for a window? I don't know if I caught that or not. Um, I haven't been, no. Okay, no. So, so when you ask for the window, the reason why that's important is because it, it gets them to see how urgent it is mm. and that everybody's doing this, okay? So when you say something like, I've got you down at five o'clock, Jeremiah, the only thing I do ask is that you give me a window because of the amount of appointments we've got scheduled that day between 4.30 and 5.30, is, is that fair enough? Yeah. So what you're getting this person to realize is like, I, I, don't, wanna, I don't wanna mess with this, this guy over, like he's got all these appointments, he's going out of his way, that's what you want them thinking. Like, I, you know, he's, he's making this work for me. He's got all these appointments, right? So that little thing there also increases your show ratio. Um, the other thing I didn't hear you ask is when you say, so Jeremiah, the only thing, once, once I book the appointment, right before I go into the close of saying, I look forward to meeting you, helping you, is Jeremiah, I got you down at five o'clock. The only thing I really do ask and expect because of our schedule and how behind it is, and I know this is important for you, is that you definitely make sure that you're gonna be there tomorrow at five o'clock. Is that fair enough? Yeah. Okay, the reason why that's so important is one of the most important, like powerful laws of psychology is, is the person wanting to be consistent with what they say. So if I ask you point blank, like, do the only thing I ask, because we're really that behind, and I know how important this is for you, is that you, you and your spouse are definitely, and I do it just like that, you and your spouse are definitely gonna be there tomorrow at between five and six. Is that, is that fair enough, Jeremiah? Yeah. And he says yes. <clears throat> that there alone will pop back in his head, even subconsciously, when, when he's deciding to go to you know, In-N-Out and grab a cheeseburger when he knows I'm showing up, or whatever. Does that make sense? Yeah. So those little things, even though they seem very subtle and not, uh, it's not a big difference, like the script was really good. And, that, and that's the thing. Sometimes it's just a little mm -hmm. paradigm shift in the scripting that'll, that'll make a big difference. Meaning that sometimes we make it seem like the results just can't get better because we're doing it. I, I feel like I'm doing it just the way I know I should be doing it. So we convince ourselves like there's not much for area for growth. So this is just... The, the, the hand I'm dealt. This is just the results I'm gonna get. And what we, we don't understand is like, no, no, you're not. You're doing everything but just this little tweak will make a difference. You're lacking assumptiveness. You're lacking assertiveness. You're not asking if they, if they can definitely make sure to be there, if that's fair. You're not, you're not doing these little things. And the moment you've convinced yourself that that's just what I'm gonna get, oh, be clear. That's just what you're gonna get. You're gonna get what you look for all the time. So understand that. Sometimes it's just a tweak and adjust and you're closer to booking a lot more appointments than you think you are. Mm -hmm. The last thing I'd say as we wrap up this session is guys, by the way, Jeremiah, you did a, did a great job, dude. You really Thank did. You. You, know, um, you can definitely tell that you've read the script, you've studied it. And that's the other thing that I don't understand. It's like when I was in, like you just graduated high school like last year, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Literally, literally, you're 19? Yeah, I just turned 19. Just turned 19. So he was 18 until he turned 19. So. <laughs> <laughs> but he started this business at 18. Yeah. Right? And, and he was in high school and he, he came and did this. I see adults all the time come on and after like three months, they don't know nothing about the script. They haven't practiced, drilled, and rehearsed it. And I'm like, what, what world are we living on? Like, if you go back to the high school days or college days, man, if you had a test... You study the heck out of that. Everybody, for the most part, did some kind of oral communicative test or speech or something in front of the class. You didn't go up there and just like fumble around or have to, like you prepared, you didn't wanna look like a fool. And you did that to get a good grade. And here, if you can practice drill rehearses saying, no, backwards, forwards, I mean, you give me any objection and I, and I can tell you what it is because, not because I've done it for 13 years, man, after a very short period of time, I could do that after like a week, cause I was, it was nonstop. I was reading in the morning, reading at night while I was driving my car, I was reading, I was reading it. I was rehearsing it. I was listening to calls, podcasts. I knew that 80% of this business is phones. That's what it is. It's phones. And 80% of the phones is you getting your mind right on the fact that every client should be an appointment. Because you convince yourself that sometimes, you know, the, the, the lead's not a good lead and this and that's like, what are you talking about? 
The lead is just a, a way for you to call that person. The lead is just a, a reason for you to contact them. But everybody needs life insurance. I go next door and talk to the dentist and he needs life insurance. Now he either has it and if he does, I'm convinced I can get him a better plan because we have so many options. And if he doesn't, then I'm convinced he desperately needs it, right? Which means what? Which means that anybody I talk to, any lead is a good lead. Because both those beliefs that I've got lead to booking an appointment and helping that client out. Does that make sense? So the phones, you should know the, the, the scripts, right? It should be something you study. If I said, hey, um, James, client says, can you send me a quote? You should be able to hit me with the response exactly like it's written on the objection handling workbook without having to look at it. After like a week, after a week, it's a paragraph. I mean, heck, think about it. Who in here went to Sunday school as a kid? Did you memorize memory verse? Yep. Yeah. My, my, uh, my nine-year-old, she does these, I call it, it's called a speech meet. And they got to memorize a verse and they get up. It's like all formal. It's, it's, it's really interesting, actually. You go in and like, and I'm like a fool most of the time, you know? So I go in, I'm like talking, messing around and like, or look around, I'm like, oh my God, this is official. Like they got a, like judges up there and stuff, you know what I mean? And I'm like on my phone talking to an agent and stuff and everybody's staring at me. And I'm like, okay, all right, all right, you know? Like they got all the kids up there and they, it's like, it's no joke. Like, all right, Parker McLean. And then Parker comes up and she's been preparing like every night for like two weeks. She's at the house memorizing this verse. Cause it ain't a verse. It's like a whole book of the Bible. And I'm not kidding, it's unbelievable. <laughs> if you get these niners up there and they'll, they'll read like Romans one through Romans like 15. I'm like, I don't even know how they just did that. <laughs> and they did it and they're nine. Yeah, I'll talk to them. Hey, client says, push it back next week. What do you say? Well, I, well this is a, I, I don't know what I, I need my, it's like, what are you talking about? Like, you should know this. You should know this. Now you should, I have it in front of me. I always had it in front of me. Why? It was just a form of like confidence. I already knew it though. I just always had it there, but I always knew it. It was no different than if I go to the gym and bench press, you don't have to touch it, but if Marcus stands behind me, I'll lift a little more just because he's standing there. He don't have to touch it, but I promise you, I lift more just because he's standing there. Does that make sense? I don't know if that, that's just me or that's, no, that makes that's just the way it works. He, don't, he, could, he could even act like he touches it and he's like, no, I didn't touch it. I saw your finger, he's like, I promise you I did not lift but it's just the fact that he's there. That's how I have my scripts. They're there, they're there. I got it, but I had to memorize. I was gonna lift it anyways. I understood it, right? So, so this is something that's worth you going in. This is like, this is a classroom edition live, man. You be homeschool though. What's your, what's your homeschool routine look like? What are you doing tonight, tomorrow morning to get yourself that bunch better? In, in, the, in the, the, the love of this classroom edition, the way I'd put it to you as we wrap up is this. You gotta look at yourself like you're a, like you're a, a teacher, right? So it, it, the job is going out there and selling insurance. But a lot of these teachers that hit the next level and they actually make a little bit more money, they go to night school after they've already done their job and they take night classes, right? To get that extra education, to get the extra pay. That's how it is in this business. Your job is to go out there and sit with clients. You don't have to be great or get good to get started. I, mean, I dialed my first dial before I even knew that there was a script. I don't even know if I used a script. I just said hi and hung up because I was so nervous. I didn't know what was going on. So you don't have to be good to get started. I started right away. But also right away, man, I was going to night school because I didn't want to get paid what everybody else got paid. I wanted to get a little bit more. So I went to that night school to get that extra education so that when I went out there and performed, I got paid more money. That's how you got to look at this business. The training, the podcasts, they're all there. The more action you take at a higher level, and the more podcasts you watch at a higher level, what you're gonna be able to do is take all that extra experience, gauge the deviation between where you're at and the way you're, where you need to be, and make more calculated, intentional adjustments to elevate and get that much better. So guys, I hope this helped. Jeremiah, I appreciate you, bro. Thank you. It's only the beginning, dude. <laughs> all right, guys, hey, make it a big week. Make sure to like, to subscribe, to share this. Um, I do believe that everybody wants to make a difference. It's sometimes a simple share where somebody can relate and say, man, I, I kind of see what Jeremiah was dealing with in those shows, or I see how Liz, I get that stuff. Share this, right? Also comment. Every week you get the opportunity to win $250 in lead money to go out there and add it to the leads that you're already investing in. And maybe that's 
one of the clients that you go out there serve and it makes a massive difference on your month and so comment below guys make it a big week be strong stay steadfast we'll talk to you soon take care What's going on guys? You know what time it is. It is time to give away 250 bucks worth of leads to four lucky people. If you commented on last week's video, it's playing right over here. Now it's playing over here. You're automatically entered to win 250 bucks worth of leads. We're gonna have four winners, so let's see who won this week. Our first winner is Declan Ozman. This is awesome. Our second winner is Leo Salcedo, taking my state exam tomorrow. Super excited to get started. Thanks for the info. Well, hopefully you pass your exam because you just won 250 bucks worth of free leads. Our third winner is Smiles. Love getting inside from you guys and let me get those leads. Well, you got them, Smiles. And number four is Cameron McNair. Guys, it's that simple. Comment and you could be one of our four lucky winners of lead credit. Winners get in contact with, with Victoria and give her your work spots uh, number and make sure that you're signing to the work spots office in Apple Valley uh, to secure those leads and to secure an extra discount. Guys, leave a comment. Thanks for staying engaged and we'll see you next week. Take care.